Thank you. Good morning. So, according to this little card that you might have got through as publicity, Facebook is killing youth ministry, which gives me a little bit of a problem because I like Facebook and I like youth ministry. But which is better? There's only one way to find out. Thank you very much. Now, I'm really glad you shouted fight with such enthusiasm. I don't know, maybe your church youth group has steadily declined since 2004 and you think Facebook's been picking them off one by one. Or maybe you had a bulletproof child protection policy um, and it's all been blown apart by adults in your church adding under 18s. Nightmare. Or maybe you're just fed up with Christians who say one thing at church and then act with a little bit less integrity and decency online. Or maybe there's another reason why you think Facebook is out to get us and you'd like to see it settled right here, right now, in some sort of Harry Hill-style fight. But maybe you just shouted fight because you do like Harry Hill. And really, Facebook and youth ministry are your two favorite things. Um, or at least the two things that take up the most of your time. And the thought of them... The thought of them fighting, or even worse, the thought of Facebook killing off our beloved youth work is almost too much for you to bear. Well, let's talk about it. At home, I have um, a garden, and we get a lot of wild rabbits, and our dog loves this because he gets to chase them around, um, but he's never going to catch any of them because he wants to eat them all right now, and if you've ever tried to catch a garden full of rabbits, you'll sympathize with the dog. He has too many choices. He's overwhelmed with options, and by the time he's made his mind up, they've all gone, and he comes away empty-handed, um, so to speak. Um, and this is uncannily similar to my experience of Facebook. Obviously, I'm not trying to catch or eat any of my friends, but I am trying to maintain... <laughs> I am trying to maintain some sort of um, meaningful relationship with them, but there are just so many, too many options. Where do I start? I've been reading a brilliant book recently called The Church of Facebook by Jesse Rice, and I've realized there is a word for this phenomenon. It is hyperconnection. And uh, we've heard of information overload. Well, hyperconnection is relational overload. It's literally what happens to us when we have too many options with regards to interpersonal connections. And hyperconnection hyperconnect overwhelms us with choice. Who should I spend my time with? Why? Where? For how long? In what capacity? Researchers have actually found that hyperconnection has a profound effect on our physical well being. But more than that, hyperconnection has a devastating impact on our relationships. Why? Because relationships require, above anything else, time. And the more relationships we have, the less time we have for each one. So essentially, the more connected we are, the more the quality of each connection suffers. And this has a knock-on effect, because it means the way we relate to each other automatically becomes more superficial, because we don't have the time. We only have time for a quick status update, a few smiley faces, a wall post, a shared link. And it's okay, because our lovely Facebook is designed to enable these quick, fire bursts of information that we can share with everybody instantly. So the pressure's off. We don't have to put too much thought or time into our so-called friendships. We don't have to work too hard. We get to enjoy the benefits of glimpses into other people's lives without all of that messy getting to know you business. We become consumers of friendship. We take the parts we want, we leave the parts we don't. And then we scratch our heads and wonder why the whole experience has left us lonelier than ever before. And yet, we can't seem to live without it. I can't bear the thought of the internet without me. So, I stay plugged in, switched on, connected 24-7 because I don't want to miss anything. Psychologists would call this a state of continuous partial attention. That's the reason why you can't hold a conversation with someone without glancing at your mobile phone. <laughs> like some of you have been doing as I've been speaking. Um, <laughs> it's why we can't give anyone or anything our full undivided attention. I sometimes wonder whether Facebook would consider rebranding itself as the anti-social network. Because in order to, it's true, 
In order to connect with the masses, we have to disconnect from whatever or whoever is right in front of our eyes. It's as if we're living this out-of-body experience where we're perpetually connected to anything or anywhere other than here and now. Well, here's a shocker. The only time that we really have is now. And the only place that we really have is here. You know, Facebook has 800 million users. The reason why is because it seems to tick all the boxes when it comes to the, some of our most basic needs as human beings. You know, the need for companionship, a real connection to another human being. And yet, I can't help but think, we forget the one who put those desires in us in the first place. What did he do when he wanted to restore a broken relationship between mankind and himself? He didn't send some encouraging message with some punctuation smileys and love hearts and kisses. He sent his son as a flesh and blood human being to walk and live among us because physical, human, face-to-face -face contact matters that much. And if it matters to God, it better start mattering to us, especially if we want to do his work, his ministry, his youth ministry. So my challenge today, as we strive to make a lasting impact on the lives of young people who are permanently attached to the Blackberries, let's not just be another superficial, shallow connection in their life. Let's spend less time staring at our glowing monitors and more time looking into the eyes of those who are called to love here and now. Thank you very much.